Hello everyone, welcome back to Study Mission's Computer Science Series. And today we're going to talk about methods of error detection. Why is there a need to check for errors? When data is transmitted, there is always a risk that it may be corrupted, lost, or even gained. Errors can occur during data transmission due to interference. All types of cable can suffer from electrical interference which can cause data to be corrupted or even lost. Problems during packet switching. This can lead to data loss or it is even possible to gain data. Squeeing of data. This occurs during parallel data transmission and can cause data corruption if the bits arrive out of synchronization. Checking for errors hence is important since computers are unable to understand text, for example, if the words are not recognized by its built-in dictionary. Look at this example of some corrupted text. While you probably had little problem understanding this text, a computer would be unable to make any sense of it. Data corruption is therefore a very real problem to a computer. This figure could be the result of some data corruption following transmission, which would make the text unintelligible to a computer. This is why error checking is such an important part of computer technology. There are a number of ways data can be checked for errors following transmission. First, let's talk about parity checks. Parity checking is one method used to check whether data has been changed or corrupted following data transmission. This method is based on the number of 1 bits in a byte of data. The parity can be either called even, that is an even number of 1 bits in the byte, or odd, that is an odd number of 1 bits in the byte. One of the bits in the byte, usually the most significant bit or leftmost bit, is reserved for a parity bit. The parity bit is set according to whether the parity being used is even or odd. In this example, if the byte is using even parity, then the parity bit needs to be set to zero. Since there is already an even number of 1 bits in the byte, which is 4 1 bits, we thus get 01101100. However, if the byte is using an odd parity, then the parity bit needs to be set to 1. Since we need to have an odd number of 1 bits, in the byte, we thus get 11101100. Before data is transferred, an agreement is made between sender and receiver regarding which type of parity is being used. Parity checks are therefore being used as a type of transmission protocol. If a byte has been transmitted from A to B, and if even parity is used, an error would be flagged if the byte now had an odd number of 1 bits at the receiver's end. For example, assuming even parity is being used, in this case, the byte received has 3 1 bits, which means it now has odd parity. While the sender's byte was using even parity, 4 1 bits. This means an error has occurred during the transmission of the byte. The error is detected by the recipient's computer recalculating the parity of the byte sent. If even parity had been agreed between sender and receiver, then a change in parity in the received byte indicates that a transmission error has occurred. If the two of the bits change value following data transmission, it may be impossible to locate the error using parity checking. Let us imagine if we are transmitting the following byte using even parity. Suppose more than one bit has been modified during data transmission. This means the byte could have reached the destination as one of the following. In all these cases, the byte has clearly been corrupted, but the bytes have retained even parity. Therefore, no error would be flagged in spite of the obvious errors in transmission. Clearly, it will be necessary to have other ways to complement parity when it comes to error checking to ensure errors are never missed. One such method is called checksum. Now let's do an activity. Which of the following received bytes indicate an error has occurred following data transmission? Take a screenshot to solve it. By the time you were solving this activity, you should have concluded that any of the bits in this question could have been changed where there was a transmission error. Therefore, even though an error has been flagged, it is impossible to know exactly which bit is an error. One of the ways around this problem is to use parity blocks. 
In this method, a block of data is sent and the number of one bits are total horizontally and vertically. In other words, a priority check is done in both horizontal and vertical directions. As the following example shows, this method not only identifies that an error has occurred, but also indicates where the error is. In this example, 9 bytes of data have been transmitted. Agreement has been made that even priority will be used. Another byte, known as the priority byte, has also been sent. This byte consists entirely of the priority bits produced by the vertical priority check. The priority byte also indicates the end of the block of data. This table shows how the data arrived at the receiving end. It is now necessary to check the priority of each byte horizontally, bytes 1 to 9, and vertically, columns 1 to 8. Each row and column where the priority has been changed from even to odd should be flagged. After a careful study of this table, it shows that byte 8, row 8, now has incorrect parity. There are three 1 bits. And bit 5, column 5, also now has incorrect parity bit. There are five 1 bits. First of all, the table shows that an error has occurred following data transmission. There has been a change in parity in one of the bytes. Secondly, at the intersection of row 8 and column 5, the position of the incorrect bit value which caused the error can be found. The 1 bit at this intersection should be a 0 bit. This means that byte 8 should have been this, which would also correct column 5, giving an even vertical parity. This byte could therefore be corrected automatically as shown above. Or an error message could be relayed back to the sender asking them to reuse transmit the block of data. Now let's talk about checksum. A checksum is a method used to check if data has been changed or corrupted following data transmission. Data is sent in blocks and an additional value called a checksum is sent at the end of the block of data. The checksum process is as follows. When a block of data is about to be transmitted, the checksum is calculated from the block of data. The calculation is done using an agreed algorithm. This algorithm has been agreed by sender and receiver. The checksum is then transmitted with block of data. At the receiving end, the checksum is recalculated by the computer using the block of data. The agreed algorithm is used to find the checksum. The recalculated checksum is then compared to the checksum sent with the data block. If the two checksums are the same, then no transmission errors have occurred. Otherwise, a request is made to resend the block of data. Now let's do the calculation of checksum. For example, we have the value 1677. We divide this by 256 and we get 6.5. Now we round the answer down to the nearest whole number, which is 6 in this case. Now we multiply this number by 256 and we get the answer 1536. We subtract this by the original number and we get the answer 141. This number is the checksum calculated for the number 1677. Now let's talk about echo check. With echo check, when data is sent to another device, this data is sent back again to the sender. The sender's computer compares the two sets of data to check if any errors occurred during the transmission process. As you will have no doubt worked out, this isn't very reliable. If the two sets of data are different, it isn't known whether the error occurred when sending the data in the first place or if the error occurred when sending the data back for checking. However, if no errors occurred, then it is another way to check that the data has been transmitted correctly. In summary, look at this echo check diagram. A copy of data is sent back to the sender. The return data is compared with the original data by the sender's computer. If there are no differences, then the data was sent without error. If the two sets of data are different, then an error occurred at some stage during the data transmission. Now let's talk about check digits. A check digit is the final digit included in a code. It is calculated from all the other digits in the code. Check digits are used for barcodes on products such as International Standard Book Numbers, ISBN. 
and vehicle identification numbers, VIN. Check digits are used to identify errors in data entry caused by mistyping or misscanning a barcode. They can usually detect the following types of error. An incorrect digit entered, for example, 5327 entered instead of 5307. Transposition errors where two numbers have changed order, for example, 5037 instead of 5307. Omitted or extra digits, for example, 537 instead of 5307 or 53107 instead of 5307. Phonetic errors, for example, 13 instead of 30. Here's a sample barcode with a check digit. There are a number of different methods used to generate a check digit. Two common methods will be considered here, ISBN 13 and Modulo 11. First, let's talk about ISBN 13 method. The check digit in ISBN 13 is the 13th digit in the number. We will now consider two different calculations. The first calculation is the generation of the check digit. The second calculation is a verification of the check digit, that is a recalculation. We will use the same ISBN as in the figure earlier. First, we will add all the odd digits. Over here, we're not going to consider 9 as odd and 8 as even. Instead, we are going to consider these as the odd numbers. The first digit is going to be the odd number, and then, the, and then we are going to skip the next digit and consider the other digit as the odd number. So in this case, we have 9, 8, 3, 0, 8, and 8 as the odd numbers. And the rest, the 7, 0, 4, 9, 3, and 2 are the even numbers. So first, we're going to add all the odd digits. So we're going to add 9, 8, 3, 0, 8, 8, which result in 36. Then we will add all the even numbers together. We have 7, 0, 4, 9, 3, 2. This will result in 25. Now we will multiply the result by 3, which would give us 75. Now we would add these results together, which is 36 and 75, which will result in 111. Now we would divide the result by 10, which would give us the answer 11 and a remainder 1. We take the remainder. If it is 0, then use this value. Otherwise, subtract the remainder from 10 to find the check digit. Since we have the remainder 1, we would subtract it by 10, which would give us the answer 9. And this is the check digit. If the remainder was 0, we would not subtract it from 10. Now let's do the recalculation of the following data. In this case, what we would do is we would add all the odd number digits together, including the check digit. So this time we need to add the check digit. We got the answer 9. So what we simply can do, let's make it simple. So we're going to add 36, 75, and 9. So let's make it simple. And we're going to add 1, 1, 1, and 9 which will result in the answer 120. Now we would divide 120 by 10, and if our remainder is 0, then the answer 9 is correct. And since our remainder is 0, therefore number 9 is correct. So the check did 9 is correct. Now let's do calculation from the modulo 11 algorithm. The modulo 11 method can have varying lengths of number which makes it suitable for many applications, such as product codes or vehicle identification numbers. The first calculation is the generation of the check digit and the second calculation is a verification of the check digit, that is a recalculation. Let's use a 7 digit number 4156710 as our example. We would right now write x as a variable to represent the check digit. Now we would start numbering the data from the right hand side. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and, and 8. Now we would multiply each digit by the position number. So we have 4 into 8 and 
we would add 1 into 7 and add 5 into 6 and add 6 into 5 and add 7 into 4 and then add 1 into 3 and add 0 into 2. And we can just skip the variable. So this will result in 32 plus 7 plus 30 plus 30 plus 28 plus 3 plus 0, which would give us a total of 130. Now we would divide this total by 11, and this would give us the remainder 9. Now we will subtract the remainder from 11, so we have 11 minus 9, which would result in 2. This is the check digit. So we end up with the following 8 digits, 4156710 and 2. Now let's do the recalculation of the check digit from the 8 digit number, which now includes the check digit. So now since we have find out the check digit, we will replace the variable x with 2 and we would now add the 2 as well. So we have 2 into 1 as well. This means we are going to add 2. Now adding 2 would give us the answer 132 instead of 130. So we would write 132 instead of 130. We would divide that by 11 and our remainder in the recalculation should be 0. The remainder 0 indicates that the number 2, which is a check digit, is correct. Now let's talk about automatic repeat requests or simply ARQs. An automatic repeat request is another way used to check data following data transmission. This method can best be summarized as follows. ARQ uses positive and negative acknowledgments, messages sent to the receiver indicating that the data has or has not been received correctly. And timeout, this is a time interval allowed to elapse before an acknowledgement is received. The receiving device receives an error detection code as part of the data transmission. This is typically a cyclic redundancy check. This is used to detect whether the received data contains any transmission errors. If no error is detected, a positive acknowledgement is sent back to the sending device. However, if an error is detected, the receiving device now sends a negative acknowledgement to the sending device and requests retransmission of the data. A timeout is used by the sending device by waiting a predetermined amount of time. And if no acknowledgement of any type has been received by the sending device within this time limit, it automatically resends the data until a positive acknowledgement is received or until a predetermined number of retransmissions has taken place. ARQ is often used by mobile phone networks to guarantee data integrity. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Studymation, animated educational videos.